So just as I'm keeping receipts for negative things said about us, I also want to keep receipts for positive things because, you know, when we go and win the Super Bowl this year, we can look back and say, you know what, not everyone was against us. You know, there were some individuals who we got to give praise to and, you know, have the right to, uh, you know, be on our wagon of winning. So let's talk about Ryan Fitzmagic, the beard. The man went to Harvard, and I guess that Harvard intellect is showing in this, because he talked to Owen K. Adams' show, The Queen, as always, about whether or not he is worried about the Bengals. So let's go ahead and listen up to what he has to say. Okay, I had Gronk on yesterday. Gronk just completely ruined. I, you see this little helmet peeking out here. Whitworth, he's friends with you. You're, you'll be with him on Prime tonight. He's trying to say this team isn't making the playoffs. What do you say? Yeah, Whit and I were both teammates. We were white Bengals once upon a time. But, man, I, you know, I think when you talk about overreaction Monday from the games that first week, uh, I think everybody was shocked that they lost to the Patriots. I don't think that's the version of the Bengals we're going to see. I do still see them in the playoffs, and I see Joe Burrow playing a lot better. I gave Mike Kosicki a very hard time for the premature gritty that he did. Um, touchdown ended up getting called back, but I am looking forward to a Mike Gritty uh, this weekend on a touchdown. I didn't even realize because that play, I was so focused on whether that was a touchdown or not. I didn't even realize he did the Gritty. Oh, Mike. Wait, but that's on Jamar Chase, though. Low key, that's on Jamar Chase because Chase was supposed to teach him how to Gritty. That was a whole entire thing. So. That is low-key on Jamar Chase for not teaching my man how to gritty correctly, okay? He got too much sour cream in him. In his skin. Like, sour cream like he, he's white. Okay, you know what? Whatever. Um, I... <clears throat> that sounds so much better in my head, okay? <laughs> he's whiter than sour cream, you know? You get... You get yeah, yeah, you already commenting. Why are you already... Stop commenting. All right. <laughs> Pause. Falls on that, guys. Anyway, um, I didn't realize that. But come on, man, big wit. That that hurts. That does actually kind of hurt that he is saying we're not going to make the playoffs after one week. I mean, come on, man, big wit. You got to have confidence in us, buddy. I mean, what you you if anyone, if anyone's going to know that we saw the season slow and we just don't look good the first week, it would be big wit, man. That's like. He should know us too well to know how we operate and how this team works. Like, mm, that, that hurts a little bit. Ain't gonna lie to you. That hurts a little bit. But, again, you know, love fits magic, and I love the support. As always, we're gonna keep this, you know, it's a two-way street here. There's gonna be people who are supporting us, especially this time when it's all going to heck, and there's gonna be people who... Don't support us. Why are you still commenting about the sour cream joke? Bro, chill. I can just enhance. I can enhance and see somebody still commenting about that. Anyway, um, bro, that beard. Look at that beard, man. Hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me take this down. That beard. That beard is legendary. Honestly. Got that freaking legendary beard, but... I, I just can't wait. I just can't wait because we're going to beat the Chiefs this week. And I can't wait. To, well, I'm just going to literally enjoy. I'm going to enjoy all next week watching videos of the media try to backtrack. Well, we thought they sucked. We didn't know that they were a decent team still. We thought they had it. They were done. I, it's going to be every single headline. If we beat the Patriots, I mean the Patriots, if we beat the Chiefs, Oh, it's going to be a complete 180, and I cannot wait. It's going to be that 360 no-scope here, boys. But, again, shout-out to our boy, Fitz, for going ahead and talking about this. And, you know, giving the credit where the credit is due. Hopefully, hopefully we live up to that credit that he is talking about. All right, so next thing I want to talk about is this. So, shout-out... Two. Let me actually move this over. Excuse me. There we go. So this was posted by Fox Joey Burr. And it's ranking. I, I just put this in my community tab and people confused. So I kind of wanted to break this down and talk about this. 
ranking offensive play callers after week one. Personnel mar and market efficiency with um, unit uh, constraints 2024. So obviously, yes, the Saints did the best. They played the Panthers. They put up 30 plus points. Um, <laughs> what's really weird, because out of all of these, I think the one team that is very weird is the Squealers. How the heck does the Squealers not score a touchdown and they show up at number three? And I think the reason why is because they did actually move the ball. Okay, they were actually somewhat efficient on moving the ball. It just was scoring touchdowns. They could get in the field goal range. They could move the ball down the field. They just couldn't finish. And that was their biggest issue is was finishing. They weren't the greatest offense in week one, but they kicked field goals. And that pretty much which was what it was. They kicked field goals. But they were able to move the ball down the field, just not actually score when they got into the red zone. Which, I guess, efficiency-wise, that's still putting points on the board. And their defense also freaking, like, destroyed and annihilated that Falcons offense, which, again, that Falcons, they're going places. Uh, Mike McDaniels did go ahead and show up right here, down here. Kind of sad that Tua is now hurt. Uh, we'll see how Tua... You guys did not see the Tua situation. He got um, very much banged up. Um, he actually ran headfirst into uh, DeMar Hamlin, ironically enough. And we're going to see if he is okay. Potential concussion. Zach Taylor, though, yeah, we would are absolutely the worst. Um, for the most part, though, not really surprised with a lot of these. Actually, let's watch that tuba play. I'm not going to... Okay. Hang on. Hold up. So, this is... I'm not going to, like... Okay, there we go. I'm just like this. So, this was the play, if you guys did not see. I'm not playing the whole entire play. The injuries. But he pretty much rams his head into DeMar Hamlin's chest, which is weirdly, you know... I don't know, that was a weird situation, because it's like, we've already had an issue with the whole cardiac arrest with DeMar Hamlin. I'm not saying Tua was trying to, but I'm saying, like, that was a very risky situation to ram your head into his chest. Uh, but then, of course, he ends up, his, you know, his, uh, what's it called, head turns right, and he had to be taken out of the game. Uh, we don't know the concussion of this or how long he'll be hurt for, but... Yeah, it's, it's a part of football, man. Football. I feel like all these dangerous injuries or really bad injuries happen on night games. I, I kind of feel like that always happens. Like, DeMar Hamlin situation, night game. This, night game. A couple years back when we played the Dolphins and Tua got his um, hit by Geno Atkins. That happened on the Thursday night game. I feel like just night games are like bad luck when it comes to like major injuries. Like, they always end up happening on night games. But... Tell me down below your thoughts, opinions, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.